the Pittsburgh Steelers are actually going to be really good this year. So I know you may be thinking back to last year, when the Steelers' longest passing touchdown through most of the year was only 8 yards, and were all around bad with a quarterback, Kenny Pickett, throwing 7 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. But through a combination of Kenny Pickett improving, overall team improvement and health, and then third, a good schedule, I believe the Steelers will be really good this year. Okay, so to start it off with Kenny Pickett, his first five games were absolutely terrible. He threw eight interceptions and two passing touchdowns and then two rushing touchdowns. But these were quarterback sneaks, so it's not like he really did a play. All he did was, you know, sneak the ball into the end zone. And if he was not a first round pick, it would be really likely that the Steelers would have benched him and he might have never got another chance. But since he was a first round pick, and since the Steelers have absolutely terrible backup quarterbacks, you know, he got to start the whole year. And we saw definite improvement. I'm not saying he turned into Patrick Mahomes, but he went from absolutely terrible to promising. He had eight interceptions the first five games. The remaining eight games that he was the starting quarterback, he only had one interception. He didn't quite figure out the passing touchdowns with only five passing touchdowns in the last eight games, but I'll take, you know, a few touchdowns and no interceptions over a few touchdowns and a lot of interceptions. And if you watch the games through the end of the year, Kenny Pickett actually looked really good in the fourth quarter. So to start it off weeks one through nine, when Kenny sucked, Kenny Pickett was ranked last in the NFL in the fourth quarter. He was ranked 27th for fourth quarter yards, had no touchdowns, had the most interceptions in the fourth quarter, and was ranked 29th in sack percentage. But then, in weeks 10 through 18, he moved all the way up to like above average, and if you look at these rankings, he was near Patrick Mahomes. He was 11th in yards in the fourth quarter, 24th in passing touchdown rate, which you know is not good, but improvement over zero. He had no interceptions in the fourth quarter and was 10th in the league in percentage of throws that were on target. So this is huge, drastic improvement. Now I know even after this, everybody still wanted to fire Canada. No Steeler fan liked him, except for one man. Unfortunately, this one man is the man in charge. Mike Tomlin said, hey, I like him, we're keeping him. So he's still here. There is one major upside being that Kenny Pickett gets another year in the system. And it actually looks like this might pay off. I know it's just the preseason, but Kenny Pickett has actually dominated it. He has had five drives and it ended up in five touchdowns. He has been 13 for 15 for 199 yards and two touchdowns and has a perfect quarterback rating. And this is not only against backups. And in his game against the Bills, the entire time Kenny Pickett was out there, he was playing against the Bills starters who are known as a good defense and are a Super Bowl contender. So he just drove down the field twice and it looked easy. So if he can continue this, if he looks half as good as he has in the preseason, then Kenny Pickett will be good enough to lead the Steelers to the playoffs. The second part of why the Steelers will get better is the overall team improvement and health. So this all starts with one player, TJ Watt. TJ Watt is maybe even more important than Kenny Pickett to this team. Last year, the Steelers were 8-2 with TJ Watt and 1-6 without him. And there's these crazy stats. They had 32 sacks with him, 8 without him. And the points per game jumped all the way up from 16.9 to 25.3. So just losing TJ Watt makes them into the worst team in the NFL, potentially. And unfortunately, he does get injured semi-frequently. Now, of course, a caveat to the prediction of the Steelers being good is they need to stay healthy, especially TJ Watt and Kenny Pickett. But going into the season, of course, TJ Watt is healthy, and it looks like the Steelers might have done some things to improve the team around him. On the defensive side, they still have Cameron Hayward, who is still really good, and they just drafted Nick Herbig, who is looking like the steal of the draft. 
In the Steelers preseason games against the Falcons and the Bills, Nick Herbig has one sack in each, and then against the Buccaneers, he had one and a half. And it's not like he's just playing against the third stringers, he was playing against some second stringers and some starters, and he looks like he has a lot of potential. Now you may say, why was he drafted in the fourth round if he's going to be so good? And he had the always common problem of his size and his body type did not fit what most NFL teams wanted. So he was too small for some spots, he was too big for others. A lot of teams thought, you're a really good player, but you're not going to work in the NFL. So he dropped down to the fourth round, and the Steelers got him, and he has looked great. So if there are other good players other than TJ Watt, maybe they can even survive a few missed games. And then on the offensive side of the ball, this team has improved as well. The offensive line has gotten better through high draft capital and free agents such as Isaac Samalu, who was on the Eagles and was a starter on the Eagles, so you know he had to be pretty good. And then their star running back of Najee Harris is healthy this year. And if you didn't know, last year he played, but he wasn't good. If you just watched it, you didn't listen to the end of the news, you just think maybe he's not good. But he actually was injured for most of the year, and he just played anyway. He had this steel plate in his shoe, so not in his foot, but in his shoe. And it really affected his running ability. But at the end of the year when he got it taken out, he looked a lot better, and he looks promising going into the year. They also have George Pickens, who's going into his second year of being a wide receiver, and it is really common for second year wide receivers to explode. And I'm not going to say he's better than Justin Jefferson like some people. George Pickens is much more talented than Justin Jefferson. But he is super talented. He makes some of the most amazing catches you'll see. Now that might be, maybe he's not getting enough separation, but he can catch anything. And maybe in year two in the same system, he'll unlock a new level. Then there's also Deontay Johnson, who's really underrated, and last year he just couldn't catch touchdowns. And over the past three years, Deontay Johnson has always been really good. In the beginning of his career, he was amazing and everywhere except for one small flaw of not being able to catch the ball, but he's actually figured that out and has been a good wide receiver the past several years. It's just the Steelers have had bad quarterbacks, so you don't know about him as much. Like, you've probably heard of him, but you don't think of him as being as good as he actually is. But last year, he had 86 catches and no touchdowns, so that's going to have to change. I know Kenny Pickett only had 7 touchdowns last year, but maybe if Kenny can get up to like 20, 25, you know, league average-ish, then Deontay and Pickens will both get several touchdowns each, and the offense will turn into a legitimate threat, and they won't need to rely on TJ Watt. And then finally, the third reason why the Steelers will be really good is look at their schedule. So I made my predictions. I think the Steelers have a good chance at going 11 and 6. I don't think they're going to win the division, but I think they're going to be a high wild card team and someone you're probably not going to want to play in the playoffs. And looking at the schedule, I don't think any of the picks I made are ridiculous, and I even think they could win some games that I have them losing. They start off with the 49ers, and they play them in potentially the best week you can, because although the roster is really good, Brock Purdy will just be coming back off the injury, and who knows, maybe he'll be rusty, maybe he won't actually be as good as he was last year, but I think the Steelers can really win this first game. And then they have a really brutal schedule with their in-division games, because I think the Browns, the Bengals, and the Ravens are all very solid teams. And Vegas agrees with me because Vegas has the Steelers as the least likely team to win the division. And you can actually get plus 450 odds for the Steelers to win the division if you're feeling like that. However, that's a bit bold for me. But I would be all over the current Steelers over under of 8.5 games or even 9.5. Or I guess 10.5 if you're feeling super brave. I think the Steelers are a safe lock for 10 wins. This year they did get the really lucky advantage of drawing the NFC West, which is either great or terrible, and the AFC South, which is almost always one of the worst divisions in the NFL. So with the NFC West, you got the 49ers who could be good or not, and the Seahawks who also could be good or not. 
but the others, the Rams and the Cardinals, I think are both going to be very bad. And then the AFC South is the worst division in the NFL, with the bad teams being the Texans and the Colts, who are also competing for worst team in the NFL, and then the good teams of the Jaguars and the Titans are both not scary. So I really think the Steelers can easily win a bunch of games, kind of get the Eagles treatment last year of not playing any good teams, and go into the playoffs hot and maybe scare somebody. The Steelers also have the advantage of not traveling that much, so if you look back to last year, the Steelers had an insane travel advantage where they only traveled 6,000 miles and the average is about 16,000 miles. They never left the Eastern Time Zone and they only went further than a 5 hour drive from Pittsburgh twice. They do have 16,000 miles traveled, but this does place them at about 12th in the league, so it is a small advantage compared to others. So really overall, I think Kenny Pickett can get better. I think the overall team, including the defense and the offense, could easily be better, assuming there are no injuries, especially to TJ Watt. And then they have a really easy schedule. I mean, it's 8th easiest in the league if you look at win percentages from last year. My bet is they go 11-6 and six and maybe win a playoff game or two. But thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, comment, like. And yeah.